Hello everyone, once again I am Sernan and I am here with you today for another journalism or campus journalism video instructional material. Our topic for today is all about editorial writing. I will be giving examples of editorial articles and also I will give some tips and pointers on how to write an editorial article based on the given technicalities or technical guides and formats so that it will be easy for you to write that kind of journalism uh, writing category. So, samahan niyo ako sa ating pag explore muli ng campus journalism particularly in this kind of category. Here are some technical guides in editorial writing. Magsimula tayo sa first paragraph. Para sa first paragraph, at least three sentences ang kailangang mailagay mo dito sa iyong introduction. Kasama na sa three sentences na ito ang inyong news peg. Ano ba ang news peg? Ito ay isang news story that forms the basis of opinion or justification. Dito nanggagaling ang iyong opinion. Ibig sabihin, ito ay galing sa isang balita. Ang news peg na ito ay maaaring isulat sa first or second sentence. Maaari kang mag-decide kung saan mo ito ilala ilalagay depende sa iyong estilo ng introduction. Then the other two sentences should be an opinion about the news peg, meaning to say, susuportahan mo agad ang news peg or ang pinaka main issue kung bakit gumagawa ka ng isang editorial. Example of this video tutorial. If you can notice, the news peg was written uh, at the first sentence, part of the first sentence actually. The escalating issue regarding the decision of the current administration to choose a less effective and more expensive vaccine coming from China becomes a major headache for most Filipinos which the government continues to ignore. So ito ay galing sa isang balita at ito ang gagawa natin ng opinion or uh, sarili natin or uh, ang explanation or pananaw ng publication. Then sa ibaba niyan ay makikita natin ang opinion kung saan ito ay mga supporting uh, details para doon sa iyong news peg. Maaari ka rin maglagay ng mga uh, important facts or evidences para mas mapalakas mo pa ito. For the second paragraph, at least three to four sentences ulit. Then you are going to write your strong evidence here from the news peg. Kumbaga, dito mo susuportahan ang inilagay mong opinion mo doon sa news peg or sa first paragraph. Then add your opinions based on that evidences. Mag-focus ka doon mismo sa news peg or sa evidence na nilagay mo dito sa second paragraph. Now, let us check the example for the second paragraph. The highlighted sentence is actually your evidence. This is a supporting detail or evidence or fact coming from your news peg from the first paragraph or the introduction. Then sa ibaba nito ay ilalagay mo ang iyong mga opinion. You can actually write at least two or three sentences para mapalakas ang iyong ebidensya or ang inyong opinion tungkol dito sa inilagay mong uh, facts sa first sentence. For the third paragraph, it is too easy, at least three to four sentences ulit, but here you are going to add more opinions but siguraduhin na marami kang ebidensya or facts na magpapatunay about your opinion because otherwise ay magkakaroon ng problema ang iyong article. For example, the evidence is written at the second paragraph as you can see. Then the opinions are uh, written in the first and the last sentence of the third paragraph. So that's the format in writing the third paragraph. That is just a suggested format actually. Let us move on to the fourth paragraph. At least three to four sentences pa rin. But in this paragraph, 
you may contradict your previous opinions here by citing some facts or reasons. Ibig sabihin, pwede mo nang kontrahin, pwede mo nang kalabanin yung sarili mong opinion from the first three uh, paragraph. But make sure you are going to quickly revert to your original stand. Babalik ka sa stand bago matapos itong fourth paragraph. For example, Ang nakasulat sa first sentence and second sentence is actually your contradiction. Kinontra mo yung first three paragraph kung saan ang stand mo doon ay uh, you are disagreeing with the issue. Then, bago matapos ang iyong sentence or ang iyong paragraph dito, ay kailangan bumalik ka. You have to revert to your original stand kasi ihahanda mo ulit ang sarili mo para sa susunod na paragraph because you need more or stronger evidences. So, this is the suggested format for the fifth paragraph. Three to four sentences pa din. In this paragraph, you are now going to discuss your original stand. Diba bumalik na tayo? We have reverted already to our original stand. But here, you need to mention more strong evidences para mas masuportahan mo pa or mas mapalakas mo pa ang iyong opinion tungkol sa pinag-uusapan. Here is the example. Using a transitional device, furthermore, ay sinuportahan ng writer ang kanyang stand para dito sa fifth paragraph kung saan ay nagpaliwanag siya dito kung bakit ganoon yung kanyang stand. Then sa gitna nito ay naglagay siya ng kanyang fact or evidence so kailangan-kailangan lagi na meron kang evidences para ito ang nagpapalakas sa iyong article. And for the last paragraph, I'm telling you, it's too easy. All you have to do is to write your suggestions, your solutions, and your recommendations here on how to deal with the issue. So, ibig sabihin, ilalagay mo lang sa palagay mo ay solusyon para matapos ang problema o ang issue dito. Here is an example of the last paragraph. So, itong last paragraph na ito ay nakafocus lamang sa solutions, suggestions, at rekomendasyon na sinulat ng writer. So, ganyan lamang tinatapos ang isang editorial article para makompleto ito. Here are some important reminders that you have to follow, strictly follow. Number one, use third person only, for example, as ours tayo in Filipino, if you are going to use pronouns or better yet, avoid using them. Wag na lang gumamit. Number two, obviously, since third person lamang ang gagamitin, do not use first and second person like I, me, you, kami, ikaw, ako, etc. Number three, do not use words that are not sure of its consequences. Ano ba yun? For example, maybe, perhaps, baka, raw, daw, dahil hindi naman sigurado, kumbaga, malalagay ka sa alanganin dito because no, you are not so sure of your opinion by using them. Number four, focus on giving opinions rather than giving information because this is not news writing. This is editorial writing, opinion writer or writing. Number five, always support your opinions with facts and evidences. Napakahalaga nito. And lastly, use transitional devices like for example, furthermore, moreover, hence, subalit, in addition, at napakarami pang iba. Another crucial or very important part of the editorial article is your title. So here is the suggested format in writing your title. Maximum of four words only. Avoid a sentence-like structure for your title. Then you, your title should already give an opinion particularly on your stand. For example, Betrayed Trust, The Sarah Slay Case Closed. Gahaman sa posisyon, dale sa public trial. So, dito sa mga titles na ibinigay ay makikita natin dito na it follows the format. May ikli lamang at may opinion na agad siya. Please study the example in Filipino.